had a chiller theme song for this week because our intro just goes really hard and now we're just all going to be real chill and real vibe. Welcome to the Unpaid Nobodies, everybody. We're having a low-key one. Talking yes. about talking about one of the greatest artists of all time, Tallahassee Payne. <laughs> Dude, when you said that last week, I fucking cracked up. Like, <laughs> just I did not know that was his name. Yeah. So, uh, how is everyone? <laughs> you know, it's been Alive. a turbulent week in the nation we live in, but not as bad as last week. I yeah, like... I guess. I guess you could put it that way. <laughs> we are coming to terms with what we have. Yeah. So, wait, Jasper, were you on last week? Yeah. 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 yeah it was the one. I know happened. we've been like off schedule, so. Yeah, it's been kind of weird, but like, no, last week we had a uh, West Side Gun inter- uh, review. Yes, 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 yes. I remember now. Still mid. Fair enough. You listen to what you want. <laughs> I'm so mad. I do. Uh, my God. But yeah, so, Cozy Cat. We're talking about Cozy T-Pain Cash. and his greatness. Yeah. So. We also have a fair amount of news to cover, so purpose. you want to just like rip right into it? <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, It seems like this is going to be the biggest month for releases it seems yeah we already have it's the election of... <laughs> everyone <laughs> delayed it it's true everyone delayed yeah maybe some people got some things to say but let's start off denzel curry dropping king of the Machi- mischievous south um the this extended. is super exciting this is a follow-up right i think so it's an extended ex- an extended it okay yeah it's an yeah. extended cut yeah Fair so enough. he dropped I'm a new song for it today uh what is it called? It's like I'm geeked or something. Like that, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, it's real good. I've really liked the two teaser tracks. Kings of Mischievous South got good, <coughs> got good, and just stayed good. Just got better. Um, it got looks me like geeked. It's adding, it looks like it's adding at least four tracks that haven't been released <laughs> yet, and then that that song still in the paint has been added to it. Okay, well. fair enough. Yeah, well, I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Denzel Curry is the best. That was a big one. Um, another big release. Corday is back. He's just dropping the Crossroads, having a lot of big name features, including Kanye West. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I thought the Kanye the... West feature was a choice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, is that is that the hip hop equivalent of endorsing Trump? <laughs> I don't know if it's that far. <laughs> I go that far. <laughs> it's close. Is there any <laughs> close. Do we have some saving grace for Kanye? <laughs> I think it's I think it's the equivalent of RFK Jr. Oh my god. Right, well, I we'll guess see. I guess that's something. But um anyway, we are having J. Cole Light, as I call him, Corday dropping it out. So it should be interesting. Yeah, die a lot J. Cole. of people are excited for it. Um besides that, Maxo Cream drops personification. This seems like it's going to be a big release as well with a lot of big name features. Um, what I am most excited about this week, it's already released a so surprise release midweek. Young Nudie and Pierre Bourne is dropping Slamir 2. Yeah, the that's first collab huge. slapped. This one I'm expecting to bang. And you know, I thought about it. Although it's not the biggest subgenre of hip hop I listen to, Trap has not been that big this year because I feel like Young Thug no. went to jail and like there's just no trap. It really has no dried up. That's something I've been hearing a lot of people talk about <laughs> is that the Atlanta trap scene has like yes. really dried up. Right? Like it's literally was, just future. Yeah, and, and he like, dropped eight albums, but still. Yeah, and it's future was very much at like a critical mass for future this year. So like right. you know, on one hand, like I think it's a I think it's a sound that is able to change and like adapt while still being that sound. So I think it's inevitably going to stick around. I just think like it's oh, just yeah, having and flowing right now. Yeah. Just be something. I was going to say, yeah, we did get a, a pretty great Young Duty verse this year on Little Foot, Big Foot, the re-release. Oh, yeah, Vista. yeah. Yeah, that's true. That was, I think that was one of my favorite things I've seen from him, really. I was not much of a fan or I didn't really know a lot about him prior, but... Mm-hmm. With the video and, and everything else, it kind of brought brought him to the forefront for me a little bit. Have you uh, dived into his discography at all? I've listened to a little bit, just like the hits and stuff, and I, I wanna I wanna go through and give the albums like a real shake. But okay, well, 
this is a good opportunity. I'm I'm excited. Yeah. I've heard I think maybe one or two songs, and um, I used to be a big advocate for Pierre a long time ago, and then he kind of started making his own music and disappeared a little bit. But I'm excited for the return. <clears throat> and then he he almost rivaled. I yeah, there for, was a, a time where he almost rivaled Metro, the time. Yes. and then yeah, just went and did his own thing post like 2018, maybe. Mm -hmm. He made his own music. I like his albums, but I know they weren't the most well received. But hey, you make a choice and you stand behind it. And I'm not mad at him. Um, last but not least, we have the 20th year anniversary for M Food that will be re releasing. Um, I think this is to go with all the other stuff that's been going on this year. Um, Jeff, did you get your packages? No, oh, they get shipped out tomorrow. They're shipped out tomorrow? Okay. Yeah. I got to make sure I get yeah. a vinyl before that takes off the store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised at how much everything sold out. Yeah. yeah. Which was I mean, a lot of them got... pre-ordered, too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's why I jumped right on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that might be a vinyl pickup. I feel like that's a classic. Um, And then actual singles. So we have a couple of singles coming out. Um, Brandon's favorite artist, The Weeknd. We're getting closer and closer. Yeah. We're almost there. We, we are. We are. I would like to have, like, a date. It would be nice to have yeah. a date. Yeah. Yes. And, like, the singles have been the most hit or miss for me in a long time. Like, I liked... The first one that dropped was good, but it didn't stick around. The one with Playboy Cardi yeah. is fine. Uh, San Paolo is weird, but I like it, but it's not up to snuff. Uh, I'm excited to hear this. Um, I'm certain I'll, I'll like the album in its entirety. I think it's a weird that they did a rollout with the, the whole thing. It's like an Apple Vision Pro thing. Yeah. It's like a whole collab thing. Yeah. And it's like, on one hand, like, I get it. I think The Weeknd is just a bit of a tech nerd himself, and he just likes being involved in this kind of shit. So, like, that's cool. But on the other hand, it's like, I sure hope I'm going to be able to watch this on YouTube and have it not be incoherent. <laughs> Like, this trilogy of the weekend is weird ending though. Huh? The ending of this trilogy of the weekend is weird. I feel. Yeah, it is weird. I feel like it could definitely come into focus, like when the whole album drops. Yeah. When you guys say weird, like in what way? Just like the style, or like it just doesn't seem to be as on point and constructed, right? Because this feels yeah, yeah. like this That's feels fair. way more like the weekend's sound and dawn fm but it mm -hmm. doesn't at least to me it doesn't feel as impactful like i i think i liked dawn fm because i felt like it was as well almost as well constructed as after hours uh yeah with like a radically new sound this almost sounds like it's halfway between after hours and starboy which could make for a perfectly fine album but so far, the I don't know. I, when, when I think of trilogies that the weekend's done, like you look at the original trilogy, which is hitting its 12 year anniversary, nuts this like month or like this week, no. which is nuts. Yeah, I listened to House of Blues like, comparing it this weekend. <laughs> yeah, like just listening to that original trilogy to what he's done now is just like totally different. I don't think that's right. One no, of yeah, the questions is totally I was actually going to ask yeah. was like a follow up to you guys. Do you think these singles are even going to be on the album? Like, who I knows? don't even think they're going to be on the album, but that's just. A you know, on one I hand, do. like, who knows? On the other hand, like, there were no singles to Dawn FM, so we don't know. And, well, no, there was one. There was one, and it was a different version that was on the album, right? It was Take My Breath. Okay. And they released, like, a radio edit, like, six months before the, before the, the album came out. And then that's, wild. that's such a long time. Yeah, right. Like, and especially because it was like a year and change away from After Hours. It was very fast. Uh, Dawn of Hemp came out very fast after After Hours in in any capacity. But uh, I'm shocked he hasn't announced a tour yet for this album. Yeah, and I wonder if that's like you know I bet this is going to be some giant fucking tour that's probably going to break some kind of record for scale or whatever. And what if he does the festival circuit next year? And I, the year I after it was a massive world tour. I mean, I would love that personally because I, I I like 
festivals just in general. But I think he had he had already said at the Sao Paulo tour it's going to be a stadium tour. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so I think he, that's what he wants. I think he wants to just go to every city and fill, fill out the biggest stadium they have, which he'll be able to do. Yeah. Yeah, that is you true. Know, I will be there. I yeah, I'd be there. I'm, I'm yeah, I have, I have five hundred dollars in an envelope again. It's good. Like, <laughs> it's time. <laughs> they get just for this. <laughs> it was for Frank Ocean, and then yeah, no, and then twenty twenty three happened, Never. and then I lost my job. But now it's back. Like, <laughs> we're back, baby. <laughs> we're so fucking back. But yeah, no, so- I'm I'm excited for everything. It's just like you know, we'll we'll see how I feel about this single, and then we'll see how I feel about it again when the whole. Uh, thing comes out. I agree. Um, moving on to some other stuff. Then another name we haven't said in a while. Actually, uh, Little Baby seems to be back. I believe he was. I don't know if it's his tour, but he was on stage recently, um, telling the crowd that he is officially back playing some new music. And as recent as of I want to say yesterday, he announced that he will be releasing a two song pack. One song called Five A.M another song called insecurities and um i don't know i think this would be very interesting i've never really been the biggest little baby fan but i think yeah. he, he does enough <laughs> to stay relevant yeah. from he dropped like that really great song during the black lives matter movement in 2020 you remember that he did drop yes yeah he dropped like a like a, an iconic song a song that would have been in my top 10 that year if we had that bot yeah. and this bot that was like an all right level well not all right level that's no it was but it was very good <laughs> it low-key like in the in the sequence of protest movements since all right it's the closest thing besides yeah. maybe this is america like very yeah but no it was a massive moment i think it's interesting timing i don't know if he's going to say anything about i i I find it interesting that he waited till Young Thug was out of jail. So I don't know. Mm. You think there's a conspiracy time. afoot? Do you think there's <laughs> I a don't know conspiracy? I you think there's a slime conspiracy afoot? Okay, <laughs> dude, slime conspiracy would be that should be the name of his. <laughs> dude, someone get Jeffrey on the phone right now. <laughs> it would be a good name for one of their albums, actually. So I'm a little upset, but yeah. Um. In much worse news, um, Nicki Minaj is coming out with a song called Insecurity, which is a remix to All Girls is the Same, or All Girls Are the Same by Juice World. Because Make it stop. Yeah, make, make it, it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> make it stop. I it's, don't like it's this. It's actually like, it's so crazy now, because before it already sucked. But now hearing it, like, I'm actually to the point of being annoyed. Like, I'm actually, like, angry. It's like, dude, let, let it go. Let it go. But anyway um some other stuff coming out the first leading single to bodie james and harry fraud's new album mm, coming out that'll um, be fun with babyface ray wow yes featuring also babyface ray they'll be dropping shrink rap and um griselda does it again <laughs> they, they, they drop an album every couple of weeks <laughs> it's, it's 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 insane it's i don't know how they do this those guys live i think they, they just live all in the studio like their house <laughs> is the studio <laughs> it's <laughs> nuts Right, but I guess like they probably go there. It's like for like eight hours a day, or probably don't. I don't know. Who knows what these guys? They could just be sitting on many, many raps, just in their uh, vault or something. Who knows? But last but not least, uh, last but not least, we have the return of Little Nas X. I wow. don't even know the last time he dropped a song. He had a huge album come out in 2022. Oh, the okay. Montero was like this huge, huge album. Like, yeah, like Little Nas X, I, I have a lot of respect for, even though I don't listen to him all that often, because mm-hmm. one, not a lot of really iconic male pop stars, and say whatever you will about his music, the dude's an iconic male pop star. Yeah, and it's yeah, and yeah, like I just think he's a, a good artist. I think he's constantly like poking the bear, and I think that I appreciate that. I and he had a a feature I really like this year. Probably won't show up in the Golden Nugget special, but his feature on Kevin Abstract's song was really good. Tennessee was that this year? Yeah, that wow. was this year. Yeah, it came out in the summer. My time is all off. Yeah, dude, time is a flat circle. Dude, when you told me Doom, like 
came out like in this that completely threw not me. even the first or second month of the year like I not even like I, when you told me I we had been up, in 2024 like, for wow. 60 days when dune came out like insane to me <laughs> yeah it's I don't know. Excited yeah. about excited about Lil Nas X. Yes, that should be fun. Um, into the actual news, uh, I'll start jumping into the little bit that we have, but I do want to cover this Sunday. Um, I went to go see Lupe Fiasco for his show in Chicago, touring his Samurai's album or Samurai album. Um, I went with Isaac, obviously. Um, my sister in law was there, and my cousin, and I must say. If you grew up in Chicago, you should see Lupe at least once. Yeah. Uh, was it was it a fiasco? <laughs> it was a fiasco. Um, someone, I should have got their name down. I didn't write it down. But Did someone you cry? Party, I came close. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, I cried. The first <laughs> time I saw Lupe, I cried. Yeah, I, I came very close. Wow. Um, someone from the city, I don't remember who it was, officially made it Lupe Fiasco Day, which yeah. was really dope. I feel like someone like him actually Is it that title. day? Is it? Yes. November 10th? 10th? Yes. So that is officially Lupe Fiasco Day. Very exciting stuff for him. Mm, they better give me the day like, off. Yes, honestly, <laughs> you gave me Juneteenth. Give me <laughs> Lupe Fiasco Day. <laughs> but yes. Um, Brandon Johnson signed the actual yeah. Office of the Mayor proclamation yeah. for it. I, found, I just found a picture of it. Yeah. It's Lupe very... Fiasco Day, a.k.a. Payday. Yeah, very very sick stuff. Very, very good. I I love Lupe Fiasco. Easily one of my all time favorite artists. Uh, one of the best albums of the year. I'm kind of bummed I wasn't there. To be honest with you, I'm not gonna lie. On the way there, yeah. Isaac was because he was like, "Is anyone from Unpaid Nobody's going?" And I was like, "Well, Jeff probably has to work. I don't know if Jasper like really listens to Lupe like that." And I think Brandon just wasn't getting the tickets at the time, and he was shocked. Yeah, specifically you that yeah. you were not. Going. Now I have seen Lupe twice in the last three years, so okay, it's not like I haven't seen Lupe. So I'm not like crying about it, but like, yeah, no, I saw him at Riot Fest and then I saw him at a private engagement in 2023. Oh yeah, no, yeah, he he, uh, he put on a full show. He put he played all his classics. Did he have a band? Uh no, no band. It was oh, like he just came up there and he was just killing it like when i when i saw I him at, so many classics when i saw him at riot fest he did the cool front to back man and he had a live band he still had a dj there like they were very clearly playing the beats from the album but he mm. had a live band there too and i don't know if that was oh we lost jasper yes but yeah no i'm really happy you saw it though um uh, live band that was it yes so yeah go th- go through you went through the entire catalog did you do a lot <clears throat> off samurai um he did do pretty much every song off of samurai i honestly Wait, I can pull this up. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Let's go, Chicago. Set list. I forget. This is like easily accessible. Oh, no, they don't have it. Okay. Well, at least from what I remember, he did do most of Samurai. Um, I'm sorry for the delay here. I'm getting my notes together. Um, no, yeah, I pulled it up now. He did do all the samurai. He did palaces, which slapped. That's yeah. my favorite song. The palaces the album. video is sick. Very, very, very good stuff. Um, but outside of that, he went into like some deep cuts. There are songs that I didn't even know that my cousin was like, "Oh yeah, this is from like this EP that never came out, and this, that, and the other." And I was like, "Dope." <laughs> um, he played superstar. He played kick push dreaming. Um. At one point, he played The Show Goes On, which of all songs, that's a song that I almost cried to, yeah. which is like a Kick weird Bo- take, Oh, my but... God. That one was – that's sick. I love Kick yeah. Push. Kick I am, Push I am was dying crazy. for the day where I can play Kick Push for my niece. Bro, he played Go-Go Gadget. I oh. – oh, my God. So hard. And I then was... I think the, the best one was Hip Hop Save My Life. That one – I cried. I full-fledged – when I saw him live, it started to rain during Hip Hop Saved My Life, and I cried. Like, yeah, like wet. I, I, I'm saying this, I came very close. I like, I had to hold back the tears. This is, it's just one of those things. I don't know what it is. You just watch like an artist grow up and like, just yeah, proud to get him excel. Yeah, right. Because it, it is wild. It is wild to think that we've been on a, 
we've been around with Lupe for so long, right? Because even I, who I always felt like I was late to Lupe because I got into him. What was the album immediately before Lasers? An album I defend. <laughs> the one that you defend? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right before Lasers. Was it The Cool or was it Food and Liquor? Uh, Food and Liquor 2. Food and Liquor 2. Oh, no, no, no. no the cool, Food and Liquor cool. 2 was after, like, right? Yeah. It was The Cool. It yeah. Was the, cool. No, the Cool is when I got on to Lupe. was in between The Cool and uh, Lasers. And what an album. And, yeah, what an album is right. <clears throat> Um, but that's mostly everything. Uh, if you have not seen Lupe, I recommend seeing Lupe. Um, but moving on from that, we have our Grammys. It's Grammy time. Nominations were announced. Um, a fuck the Grammys. Yeah, fuck the Grammys. Well, who cares? Who gives a shit? Like <laughs> we do this every year. <laughs> we, right, have, like, we do I this have, well, like, every around. year. <laughs> I actually have horses well, in the like, race this year. Let's go. Yeah, I know, but like I, I have a problem of it as a as a system. And also like just knowing how the Grammys are awarded is like it's like a handful of marketing executives. It's not even like it's not even like the Oscars where it's the the workers unions of the that make up the academy voting on things, right? Which is in and of itself a silly and insular of a community to judge art. And here we are, we're podcasters. I love judging art. But like, you know, I but then again, I gave up on award shows a long time ago. I think it's all I, despite having created one. Uh like <laughs> that's just because I think it's a funny thing we do but <laughs> it's a good way to end the year yeah but yeah you know you're i right. school boy q got robbed yeah school boy q got robbed don't get me wrong like i still like i still appreciate like dochi getting nominated uh i mean i can go through it now yeah um some of the nominations uh and i'll i won't go through every single one but obviously record of the year it is important to note not like the not like us taking nominated. You got nominated to, for a bunch of things. Yeah. Yes, for a lot of things. Um the album Beatles of the year. got nominated for record of the year. Yeah. I hope the Beatles win this, actually. I'm not gonna lie. That would be insane. Coming out of the woodwork after like fifty <laughs> years and just grabbing the Grammy from Kendrick would be ridiculous. Yeah, it'd be ridiculously <laughs> racist. <laughs> I don't know about that, Chief. I don't I do I, like I, I, I do. Racist, but I would not <laughs> I would not I think it comes down between Kendrick and yeah. have you listened to that think... then? No, 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 I have not. Also, Espresso is big. I know a lot of people have been on Espresso. I think I refuse to listen it to comes down, Carpet. I think that's that and Kendrick. I think it's her or her and Kendrick, really. Does does Chapel not have a record of the year nomination? She does. Good she does. Babe. Good look, Good babe. Good yeah, I think it's between Chapel and Kendrick. Right? Yeah, those okay. are those are I'm the awesome. two stars of twenty twenty four. And good luck, baby. Uh, also, Sabrina one also. Sabrina is huge. I'm not going to deny that Sabrina had a huge blow. I think it's point. those three. Yeah, honestly, yeah. It's, it's probably it's those three. I just feel like I feel like a, I just feel like the pop vote is going to be split. Like oh, yeah, the people true. who are going to vote for pop are going to be pop music are going to be split between Sabrina and Chapel and Taylor Swift. Who it's well, also I, I feel of like course it is. whoever like, wins record of the year is not going to win album of the year. Yeah, that's usually also, what happens. Like Chapel, if Chapel, Beyonce, Sabrina, or Taylor win record of the year, they're not going to win album no. of the year. That's why I think it's almost that. certainly going to go to Kendrick because he doesn't have an album. That is also sure. true. That's, you know? that's interesting, but it's nominated for song, music video, and a bunch of other stuff. It's too. nominated yeah. for a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, just like, like second most albums. nominations. Andre, yeah, I, yeah, Andre three thousand album new, nominated new song, for best album, album was pretty cool. Watch that one. Yeah. It's gonna be Brat, but but yes, that would be wild. I, I liked Brat a lot. I think it's gonna be Brat. I liked Brat a lot. Yeah, like Brad. I liked. Brad. I, 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 I did a quite a bit. Like, I'm a Charlie XCX fan, like low key. I think I keep like every I year I overestimate Chapel. the Grammy. Yeah, I I would say, I, 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 on an album level, I'm feeling Chapel more than anyone else. Uh, yeah. I think that's likely, but but yeah. I feel like they're gonna they're gonna fuck it up somehow, and I feel like that's what always happens. They always do. Yeah. Like, Something that's a little more mediocre always wins, and I think Brat Summer is the thing that's going to drive this home. Unfortunately, I think that's where I just like. I guess that's where I differ because I think on a content level, I think Brat is the most interesting and forward pushing of those albums. Mm. Like I like Fall of a Midwest Princess. I think like those, a lot of those tracks are way better than anything on Brat. But I think as an album, because I've heard all these albums all the way through many times, like. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I think Brat is a a genuinely respectable piece of work. Just because it comes from like the pop cocaine sphere doesn't mean it shouldn't be, you know. Like I talk about that shit with like Future all the time. Like you know, you should be taking it seriously despite the aesthetics he draps himself in. I feel the same way about Charlie, right? I do think Chapel's gonna win because I think Chapel has had a bigger year. She blew yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I but I, I think Brat is yeah. I just disagree with the idea like, that Brat is, in some shape, way, or form, like an inferior album to anything else nominated. Mm-hmm. I think it's sonically less interesting, but that's just my personal thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, no. and I, I think it's it is, it's. I think it was it received a lot of hype and attention for. I think, frankly, a lot of the wrong reasons. Also, because I agree with what you're saying about like it being a really interesting. For, examination yeah. of what it's like to like be young in like the club scene and kind of have like a retrospective about it but at the same time i think that it was like put on a pedestal as being like this this thing that it's not for for being this thing that it's not and i think that it's like i don't think it holds up dynamically to like something like rise and fall of midwest princess which i think has a lot more going for it sonically that's just like my take yeah i guess like my thing is that i just see midwest princess is just a, once again i like chapel a lot probably no, not as much as Charlie, but like I like Chapel a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's just Gen Z share. Like yeah, no, 100%. the the or, content, or, yeah, or like I don't think yeah. like don't get me wrong, I think it's like good musically. Pink Pony Club, absolute banger, like fantastic, yeah. like really like much higher highs in my opinion. But I do feel like Brat is yeah. just like way more sonically forward, and like this is just the next share. Lady Gaga was the next share. Madonna was the next share. This is the next share. I've I've said it before. I'll, I said Taylor Swift, but for the they thems. Yeah, I think Taylor Swift should be driven out of the Grammys. With <laughs> Taylor just opened her mouth. Somebody hand her a Grammy right now. Like, I've, like... oh my god, it's funny that you say that because I've heard like hardcore Taylor fans say that. They hope that she loses because yeah, I know that this is not a, a well received album within divorced. Taylor's fan base or among music nerds. So I don't think, if anything, I think that's the reason Taylor doesn't win is because like kind of everyone is acting like this is one of her worst albums. And yeah, I didn't listen to it. I stopped listening <clears throat> to Taylor Swift after she stopped doing the folk music. I, I never listened to be honest. You know her best her, new artist though. Yes, who's best new hard. artist? But I think we know who's going to win, though. I think Chapel Run's going to win this. Yeah, yes. Chapel, Chapel Run's going to run away with this, win. but not who I want to win. It's not even going to be close. But Dochi and I mean, is nice. I think Prong Ben. I'm shocked they really gave her consideration. Who? Because like this is the like Chapel yeah, is going to run mean. away with it, but like Teddy swims, Benson Boone, Shabuzi. Yeah, and the other thing is that like Chapel Chapel blew Sabrina. up this year. Right, yeah, but it's been around a long. But time. has been around this a long time. This is the hardest category. Yeah, same yeah. with same with Sabrina. Right, like I think to me, I would have wanted uh, Shibuzi. Loki, I'm shot. Like, is Glorilla not nominated for this? No, no. Oh my god, I think out of all, I, I think Glorilla should have a nomination for this and should. Yep. Low key, be the winner. Like, <laughs> yep. like Glorilla yeah. was, you know, living in an apartment in Tennessee. You know, two years after Pink Pony Club came out, like I, I feel like they just threw hip hop a bone in this category. Like, yeah, with who? That's why. Well, Dochi. Oh, Dochi. Yeah, yeah, and I get it. Like, Dochi is great, but like, it, 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 it's here. such a hard category this year. I feel like they just yeah. went. We need to have one hip hop artist in here. Yeah, right, and it's Let's like go with. And it is just kind of like it kind of just highlights the inherent vice of award shows because it's like, you know, do you go with someone like more forward thinking like a Dochi who I think will probably mm-hmm. end up having like a much better body of work than Glorilla or do you go with someone who had more hits this year? And especially yeah. if you're going to marginalize <laughs> hip hop, like it's not 40 percent of what people listen to. You know, I know it's yeah. less popular than it has been, but like, you know. That's true. You know. Oh, also, I got um, really high after work, and I have a Beyonce theory for his for her last Renaissance album because she says a three act Renaissance album. 
Okay. And each What's time she changed genres. First it was house, then it was country. Right? Metal. Oh, and blues next. No. And the answer is right in front of our fucking faces. I think we're finally going to get a Beyonce hip hop album. I think she's going to be rapping like she was on the Carters. That'd be insane. Yeah. I think it's going to be a Houston focused like hip hop album. I, that was just like, I was thinking yeah. about it and it's like, what if she's just rapping? Ooh. Like, cause like, it, it, I don't think the Carters is amazing as a project, but like she is very good. She has like some verses where she's she rapping and she's rap. very, very good. She can rap. Yeah. Or and the and on the Beyonce featuring um like Janelle Monet Megan. rapping duo. Megan, anyone. Oh my god. Or yeah, you gotta yeah, do Megan that. Or... You gotta have that. Yeah. Like because wow. every because she also rapped on the Savage remix. Solange. Solange. Hello, Millie. Oh my god. I feel, exactly. I, I just feel like it's gonna be oh, and man. I gotta say, I gotta say, I'm just saying her favorite argument. She said it herself. That her her upcoming favorite artist is that Mexican OT. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's fucking go, dude. Like, <laughs> you're making. She did say excited. that. Like she this. did say that. Like somebody email her right now. Yeah. No, that's that's <laughs> my Beyonce, theory. Please. That's my theory, and yeah, I. It's what I hope. I hope we just get the Beyonce hip hop album. Like, uh, I I just feel like she's destined for like a blues jazz. I I'd, I'd like that, but. You know, I think there's a lot of things. I, you know, I think it could be rap gospel. Would be, uh, but like, be but like, she she's also just never done a full rap project. She's and she's yep. so close to the genre, right? Maybe not as close as she is to I mean, house and country. I mean, look at but her like husband. probably the next one. Like, I was gonna say, I would say she's look at her husband than the other ones. <laughs> Fair, yeah, because her husband's fucking Jay Z, right? Right. Like, Could you imagine you get like Beyonce, like a hip hop project with like all the best producers? We're talking the Hit Boy, the Alchemist, Metro, she can get whoever she wants. She can get whoever she wants, right? You know, and I think you're Dre. gonna see a, and like I think Dre, I think Dre would definitely show up. I think you'd see a ton of people from Texas. Right. Guys, like, okay, let, let's let's <laughs> let's calm down. I think I think it could happen. I I feel like I'm making good arguments. I hope you're right. I'll yeah. say that. Go on. Does she yes. get Frank Ocean though? I hope so. No, probably not. Because, I don't think anyone. Beyonce does. Beyonce's on two tracks on Blonde. Yeah, Beyonce's on two tracks on Blonde. Counterpoint. She's put out a house music album, which would be a much closer fit for Frank Ocean, especially considering the last singles he dropped. And didn't That's have him there, so. I don't see how that would happen, but I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I like it. I, look, I, I, there's not a single there. artist in this world where I'm like, no, no Frank Ocean. But yeah. especially after Chromacopia coming and everyone like theorizing that Frank was going to be on it. And I'm like, no, he's not going to be on it. I just, I do not subscribe to any Frank theorizing, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'll believe right. it when I fucking hear it. I'm not even going to believe it. If I see him in a video, with fucking right next to fucking Abel, like, hey, I'm on the weekend's new album, and he breaks his silence. No, I'm not gonna believe it till it's coming out my headphones. Like, <laughs> fair enough. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, moving on to some other stuff, and we're getting to hip hop. We are getting there, but we do have to touch on R&B because it's adjacent. Um, sure. right. I wanted to bring it up because Charles Gambino got nominated. Yeah. Randall Stone Child in the, the year. world. For an best R&B album? album of the year, baby. Best progressive R&B album. Um, yeah. The Pretenders will be so glad to know you by Avery Sunshine. In route by Duran Bernard. Um, Crash by Kaylani, but she's getting canceled right now, so who knows what that's going to What's she getting canceled for? I don't know. Something with her baby daddy and some, I don't know. Mm. And then, um, why Lord? Mm. Anderson, uh, Anderson Pack, which honestly... I like more than Bando Stone, but I would give it to either one. I'm, I'll be okay. I think Bando Stone's in the wrong category. I'm not gonna lie. Would, would you move it to? I'm I'm honestly surprised. Yeah, I don't any anything don't, related to rap that it's nominated for. I'm surprised that Yoshinawa wasn't nominated for song. I, yeah, like don't get me wrong, I really really like that song, but it wasn't anywhere. You know, and like once again, these are marketing people making these decisions, right? That, that's true. That's I true. do think Bando Stone was not very well marketed, but. You know, just in the sense of, oh, and because it's in my top three of the year for sure. Like that album has grown on me immensely. I'm happy it got any kind of thing because I do like when things are recognized. 
But like this seems very misplaced. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Jasper, I challenge your theory or your or your point. Who would you remove from the best rap album category to put in Bandlestone? Who would I remove? I think that's pretty easy actually for best rap album. Yeah. So we have J. Cole. I delete later. Get that shit out of there. Really? I don't think yeah. Yeah, yeah. Over the other ones? My Delete Later has a literal deleted song. It literally has a deleted Yeah. Song. yeah. And, and like it's that. Just, it comes from a place of not J. Cole. You know what I mean? It's, it's, like, it's not. It's yeah. Obviously not. It's more of a mixtape than an album. Much. It's more of a mixtape mm-hmm. than an album. And also, let's just fucking say it. Like, I think like the first. I, there are a lot of tracks on that album I like. This is easily J. Cole's worst project. But it's not mm-hmm. rewarding. Yeah. Look, you should have been in there over J. Cole and over Common and Pete Rock. Yeah. Okay. And I think personally, I think Schoolboy even, Q, even if I personally like Bando Stone more, I think Schoolboy Q, Q deserves a nomination more. way more because I think it's a much more for, yeah. it's a much more hip classic hip hop album. Right. Yes. So that is exactly it. Uh I was watching the company man, Justin Hunt. Shout out to him. He's shared our stuff before. Uh and he was talking about it and he was like, you know, the thing is the Grammys never nominate two projects from the same label. Interesting. And it's like, yeah, it's real easy to be like, oh, replace Pete Rock with Schoolboy. Oh, repeat uh, my delete later with Schoolboy. Oh, delete Eminem yeah, with Schoolboy. But then you get to Alligator Bites Never Heal, and it's like, maybe, maybe, but I that is probably the best album nominated. <laughs> like, and, you know, I think that does just present a problem. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, like, None of the albums that are nominated for best rap album this year crack on top three. Like I didn't think find any right. of these projects particularly compelling at all. I, I there there are many things that I would put in here over all of this, but I mean Bandstone yeah. I think is it wouldn't win, but I would like to have seen it nominated. I think Eminem's gonna win. I would I think that's what they set it up, it up for. Eminem. Yeah, I think Eminem's gonna win. Uh, that's what they set it up for. Yeah, yeah. Eminem's gonna win. I'm gonna be happy I'm off social media again. Like yeah, it, I'm still surprised about anyway. Yeah, right. Listen, if you wanted to put like a record of the year for fuel, I'm okay. We can talk oh, about yeah. you that. You got my vote. Yeah, you got <laughs> you you know, that honestly Loki might be one of you know, the better songs released this year, but as an album, no, I don't I would have put Bando Stone. It doesn't work. Over um, Curtis, who you got for best gospel album. Oh, let me scroll down. I yeah, even, God I boy. To be honest, <laughs> I haven't scrolled that far down. Hold on. Also, before we before we get into that, I just want to drop a sad fact for you all. We have surpassed three thousand days since a Frank Ocean project has released. Cool. Three three thousand and eight days. Why are you doing sad math? Stop it. Like, what, who asked? For, dude, knowledge is a person. I don't need this. Me. I don't need to know new sad things. Stop it. Purvis. I have enough sad things. Yeah, like, I'm crying now. Like, Purvis, who's going to win the like God Alexa, music? Alexa, play God's people. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what I was going to say, since we are talking about hip-hop, there is another category, hip-hop song. Um, Asteroids. I don't think that's gonna win. Yeah, Carnival is nominated, which is crazy. <sighs> wow, shocking. shocking, crazy to me. Like that, that one's actually like shocking. Um, yeah, that's, that's shocking. Like, okay. If if that wins over not like us, can you imagine? I think good. that would be racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? You're right. That's I agree with you. The winning. No, I agree with <laughs> not you more, not right. more equal. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's like oh, you two dead white guys are better than Kendrick Lamar. Never, no, there's no dead white guy better than a live Kendrick Lamar. Like, <laughs> but we also have like that and not like us. So Kendrick's got two runnings in there, and then yeah, Glow, Glorilla did show up. Yeah, yeah, Glo- yeah. That's Glo- easily a, a top three song of the year for me. So I'm very I want yeah, Glow to win. <laughs> yeah, that that just because not like us is so stacked. Like, yeah. I would want Glow to get that recognition. And, yeah, I think, yeah, Glow is just, like, one of the best hip-hop songs of the year. Like, totally. Right? It's a lot of fun. Uh, I just think, you know, she should have been nominated a little bit more. I don't think for album. I don't think any of her albums deserve to be nominated. But I thought for, like, best new artist. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought Glorilla deserved a shout-out. I get that. But, yeah, that's our yearly uh, F the Grammys, but we had to talk about it anyway. I stopped listening to award shows when they didn't nominate Adam Sandler for Uncut Gems. 
Okay. It's funny that you mentioned Adam Sandler. One thing I wanted to point out, I am so disappointed in the best comedy album nominations this year. You can be sad. Best, I forget they have random stuff in it. Yeah. Because no one Gervais. listens to comedy albums. People stopped Dave listening Chappelle. to com- com- comedy albums in the 80s. <laughs> I know, yeah, that's, that's true. true. Um, but Trevor Noah being nominated for this makes me sad. Remember have, when he was on top of the world at The Daily Show and then he gave it all up? Have you heard that. the special? Sad voice. No. Uh, is it good? Oh, I haven't. I don't. I don't oh, listen I don't, to comedy albums. I watch. No, it just makes me sad because like this is such a such like a niche like thing that yeah. people don't really pay attention to anymore. And he had like such a spotlight for like such a long time and just like walked away. And then it's yeah. like, where the fuck is Trevor? No, I don't see him on social anymore or anything. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's doing his own thing. Dave Chappelle's gonna end up winning. Yeah, Dave Chappelle's gonna end oh, up yeah, winning. Probably. I yeah, and well, what a disappointment. But yeah. Um, Wait, we didn't talk about best music video. Who's oh, nominated? Crap. Yeah, about that. Not like us is nominated. That better really? fucking win. Yeah, yeah, not like us is. Uh... I mean, the video for Taylor Swift is nominated. That, that actually is a good line. video. That is a good. It video. is. It is. I'm not, but, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's not. Not. Video. It's not. Not like us. Three sixty. Charlie XCX. Houdini. Mm-hmm. Eminem. Not it's like us. Video. And Fortnite. Taylor Swift featuring Post Malone. So we got mostly hip hop. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, I mean, I feel like I mean, hip hop's really the only me. music. Yeah, I was gonna hip-hop's say hip hop's the only. They're the only music genre really putting out music videos. Yeah, because yeah, because like a lot of the big pop artists aren't putting out music videos. Like I, like I remember watching the uh, the Hot to Go music video and being like, "This is fine." Like, <laughs> no one wants to put their own money or budget for it. Yeah, right. Record labels don't yeah. want to budget for it anymore. Yeah, and that's like, you know, it kind of gets back to the thing I've always thought about is that, like, you know, the importance of culture. Because, like, there's a culture of music videos and hip hop. That's why they're still made and still good. And we still get not like us, yep. you know? So I think, listen, I'm okay with not like us. Hip hop's used to doing music videos on, like, for 10 cents, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. Dirt not to go gorilla on recording everything. Yeah. No, I, right. I I agree. Well, on to the rest of our news. Sir Pusher T will be pushing coffee instead of tea. He be pushing now... sh- pushing C. Yeah, <laughs> right. not C. Coke. As I say, you know, credit Rachel. Uh, why wasn't this a tea brand? Like, right. It would have made so much more. His sense. name is Pusher T. But it's because it's he knows how to source things from Colombia. <laughs> that's, I guess. Yeah, that's a yeah. Good one. Yeah, you got it. Okay, you got it. We we get our tea. <laughs> we get our tea from Colombia too. But okay, like <laughs> like it's a, Columbia's a, the coffee. Uh, three. They're known for the coffee. Yeah, they are known for the coffee. I They're mean, known for things that generally do this to you. Like <laughs> it, it is an upper. It is an upper. It is an upper. God, I need some coffee. I'm so tired. Uh, but yeah, no, I think this is cool. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I think it's cool. I think like, um, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be very interested because like I, I'm a coffee drinker. I I get like a I have a subscription to like the dark matter. Like they send me like a small bag every month of like a new roast. So like I'm interested you to try snob. it. Snob. I'm not a snob. I just like buying the good stuff. Like, have you ever had like? Uh, roasted beans. Coffee's from nasty. That's it's okay. It's an acquired taste. It's an acquired I've, taste. I've grown. I've grown acquired. Honestly, I used yeah. to not love it's, it. Now yeah. it's... I never drunk it until corporate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd rather drink tea. I mean, I prefer tea too. Yeah, but... yeah. No, I. It depends. Like, if I'm trying to get a up, like if it's in the morning, I'm definitely drinking coffee but if i'm it's at night definitely drinking tea all right so push it tea, dropping coffee then we have denzel curry on kai sinek talking the goat streamer yeah i put this on here everything i know everything i know about kai sinek is against my will thanks to social media yeah but props (laughs) to him for like Props to him for like bringing rappers on his show and like actually developing like a decent interviewing rapport with them. Cause yeah. like we've gotten some cool stuff. Like he's had Denzel Curry on, he's had Lil Uzi on. 
He's had um, Glorilla are, on. Yeah. Glorilla was on, yeah. Blew up his basement and, with Kevin Hart. Yeah, yeah he just I, had I, the Devil on, on yesterday. But yeah, yeah so Denzel Curry was on. It, um, and apparently, I didn't know this, Denzel Curry, and, and he, was, he was talking about pre-Cypher mm-hmm. life. Um, Denzel Curry and XXX Tentacion used to live together. And the house that they lived in together was where Ultimate was recorded. Oh. Which is like just a wild thing. And this was like pre look at me, like for X too, so it wasn't like he had popped off yet. <laughs> and cute. then the the reason apparently that Denzel went first on the twenty sixteen cipher was because nobody else wanted to go. So he just stepped up and went. Yeah. And yeah. it just it just rolled off from there. Yeah, so I mean, he was dropping a lot of really interesting stuff from that that time on this show. It's pretty cool. That makes sense to me because listen, that cipher is fun, but like, boy, the retconning on that cipher that I have seen <laughs> is nuts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, like I've always liked it. A, like I always thought it was fun. Like you yeah. know, I think Denzel Curry is like the only incredibly talented MC on it. Wait, yeah, it's you, yeah, um, best, like the only real at the time, like developed rapper for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jasper, did you see the part of the stream where Denzel was talking about? Um, oh my God, what's his name? Kodak Black was making fun of the beat. Yes, and everybody was laughing like throughout the entire <laughs> shoot, even the cameraman. Yeah, that's. Funny. And the dude that made the beat was in the room. <laughs> Just like right there, yeah. I like that beat. The streams are fun sometimes. They are rambunctious, but it's some good quality stuff on the guest room. Damn. But yeah. Shall we dive in? What's his name? What's his first name, Brandon? Tallahassee Payne. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, guys. I was drinking. That's a not his nights name. Ago. I just pulled it up. I literally it's looked it up. Fahim. No, Fahim. it's not his real it's name. Not. It's. T Pain is short for his stage name Tallahassee Pain. It's oh, not his real dude, name. Was... <laughs> what you think he's named yeah, we were... after a the city in Florida he's from? Like, it's funny. He's black. We he's were just not talking... white. We were okay, just unpack about... that, Jeff. That's some. There's that. That's hey, some. I don't some... Like <laughs> don't get canceled. Don't get canceled. <laughs> we're doing so well. Saying, that's some. We were doing some so well. Fucking re- redneck. Fucking Florida. Yeah, that is backwater fault. That's legit. You got to know the area, Tallahassee. Yeah. When I think of, if if I think of someone named Tallahassee, I'm thinking of like a fucking Ted. I'm thinking Billy Bob from Varsity Blues. Homeless person fighting people. Yeah. And that's not who T Pain is. T Pain Mm -hmm. is a sound defining artist. Man. He's going to build you a mansion in Wisconsin. Oh, well, man. what a what start. A <laughs> so I think uh, we're talking about a gentleman who I think has just had a massive presence in hip hop ever since he, he started, with. ever since like the early 2000s. Uh, I think uh, Autotune, like he basically created the whole the Auto-tune King of thing, Autotune, right? Yeah. Like. You know, popularized auto think tune, of, yes. Think of how many think of how many artists we wouldn't have if it wasn't for eight oh eights and heart heartbreaks. Man. And we wouldn't have eight oh eights and heartbreaks without T <clears throat> I agree. So True. In in some ways, like I think he has left a massive fingerprint. So when I was just like kind of scrolling through because it was after I heard his feature on the new Glorilla album, and I went back, he had one of my favorite features of twenty twenty two on the Denzel Curry album, uh, on the song Troubles. I just went back and I just listened to all of his music. And I was just like, how have we not talked more about T-Pain? (laughs) So then I was like, guys, let's spend an entire night talking about T-Pain. And then Tower the Creator dropped an album. And then West Side Gun dropped an album. So here we are. Now we're talking about (laughs) T-Pain. We have been sitting on this for a while. Yeah. Um, at least for me, T Pain. I think when he was at his peak, I didn't listen to enough music to really yeah respect it. There were definitely some school dances I got down to, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand the uh, impact that came with T Pain within the hip hop industry. Um, I, know I don't you think a lot of people do. 
I think yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people realize like just like how on the present he's been. And like, you know, I think looking at it like just even just thinking about it like in the background, mm-hmm. you you may think oh, like he's just a feature artist. But then you look at some of his debut singles and they are well, not some of his debut singles, but some of his like lead singles and mm-hmm. they are classics just as much, right? I mean, you look at his debut album his, he had I'm Sprung. Wild. I'm in yeah. love with the stripper. People classic. still play that song. Ooh. Still classic. Classic songs. Yeah. He's been in like video games. He's been in film. He's produced classic albums. He's, he's also like, written a he, bunch of music. So young. He's also written a bunch of music under fake names that no one knows. Yes. Like, I remember watching this TikTok about him, and I went back and I looked at it, uh, like, prepping for this episode a few weeks ago, about how he writes a lot of country songs, because he's from Tallahassee, Florida, you know, as we've discussed. Yeah. And, you know, country music, <laughs> obviously, is a part of the culture there. And he writes country songs, and he puts a different name on it, because, frankly, people just don't want it if it's his real name or T-Pain. And he just likes writing country music. And I think that's like one of the major things I've always appreciated about T-Pain is that it just seemed like he was always innovating because he liked it. He's true to himself. Yeah, that that country music fact. He he was talking about that on his stream and he said that one, it was easier money than like anything else he does. And two, yeah. it was just like harmless fun where he could just like go and write whatever and like not have stakes surrounding like his own discography or whatever and just like enjoy it. That was true. Yeah. He also released one of the most embarrassing songs ever in hip hop history this week. Oh yeah, with uh, Mark I Zuckerberg. I have not. Yeah, where Zuckerberg oh, anniversary with his wife? Huh? You should look at the thumbnail for this week. I can't. I'm using Discord to record the episode, Jasper. <laughs> like, I mean, you, <laughs> you, 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 can pop the, you, you can pop out the the recording. It's the not one. during. Like, <laughs> I would say he's the one. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Like, I have it all popped there. See? Yeah. There's third ways. But, yeah. Um, ah. but interesting enough, I remember, there, I think Jasper brought it up the other week. Like, there was literally a point in doing the Grammys where he could have just stayed on stage. Because no matter who won, he yeah. was going. To, he was not. So, he yeah. was a part of let's it. Let's talk about this. Yeah, let's talk about this. That was the 2007 Grammys, I think. Yeah, there was a couple. This 2008, nine, and ten. He was nominated for three different songs for three different artists. <laughs> 2008 right, but... was Bartender, Good Life, Kiss Kiss. Nuts. 2009 was Get Money, Low. Dude, he's on Get Money. I forgot about that. <laughs> Got money. Yo, 2010, I'm on a boat with Lonely Island. Dude, that's a classic. with Jamie (laughs) Foxx. Like, come on. That's a classic. He's on a boat, man. It's going fast, man. And it still slapped. Dude, that was so (laughs) funny. I remember I I watched that episode of SNL live. And I think that was actually my first time I ever, like, really saw T-Pain was his live performances there. Mm. And... Yeah, because like when T Pain was out, I was really more in the rock sphere, <clears throat> and honestly, my first impression of T Pain was not positive because I was like very, I was sixteen, inca- incapable of critical thought, and you know, I was like, oh, he's not actually singing; it's a robot. It's not good. Right. Yeah, Which yeah. like, I, uh... when you're young, and like, don't get me wrong, there were definitely people who were into it. Those songs are classics for a reason, right? And yeah, those I was people, into it, yeah, you I... were into it. Yeah, you were definitely into T Pain. I, we I was into him because of his features and he was around little Wayne at the time. So him and little Wayne, Wayne were so close. They were like rumored to drop a little Wayne T-Pain album called T Wayne. Like that's what they were called. Cause they were so close back then. Yeah. Like that's how I got into T-Pain and like, have that's any of you guys seen him live? No, it I is know. on my list. After this episode, he is tip top of my list for an artist. I want to see live. I have a confession. I messed up. I could have seen T-Pain for free, and I didn't. When? This was back in 2016. DePaul University. He was the uh, musical main act for the DePaul Fest, which happens at the end of the year every year. Oh, that's fun. And, Uh, And I was like 
really into like very specific hip hop artists at the time who I was like just into and he just wasn't like a draw yeah. for me because it was just like solo T Pain and I just didn't do it because it was like a lot of it was like a lot of crowd and it's like a whole thing, it's a whole day. But I should have. You said I think I was also bitter. Yeah. Sixteen, I think it was, yeah. yeah. I, I was also just bitter about the fact that I was not in college when Childish Gambino headlined to Paul Fest, which happened in like twenty fourteen or fifteen, and I was just like, fuck, I'm upset. Yep. I don't want to go. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I'm, I was I'm, at the Yeah, uh, I am the only one that saw him. Damn. Yeah. Did you see him yeah, with Little Wayne him, back in the day? Yeah, on the Carter Three album back in two thousand ten. Wow. Wow. Carter Three album. Jesus. Yeah, what and that's when I really like knew he was a phenomenal dancer and a phenomenal singer because like he, he did stuff well yeah he would break dance like in the middle of a song he just fucking <laughs> instrumental he just just start break dancing he's fucking phenomenal at it that's nuts <laughs> and then he would <laughs> sing songs without auto-tune and he, like, can't he sing. has he an amazing can't voice sing, yes. yes he can't sing have we all seen the war pigs cover oh it's Dude, phenomenal it's unbelievable. Oh, the War so Pigs cover? War Pigs by Black Sabbath. Yeah, he covered I, it. Yeah, it's like a very, appearance. it's a very good that cover. Album. It's a very good yeah. cover. There's a, I just feel one of my favorite covers of all time is a different cover of War Pigs, and it's like, so I naturally compare it to that one, and I don't mm -hmm. think T Pain yeah. holds up. Like, I'm gonna keep it a buff though. Canonically, T Pain is the best, and I'll tell you why. Because Ozzy Osbourne found it and posted it on Twitter and said, why the fuck did nobody tell me this exists? It's the greatest cover of this song I've ever seen. So oh, Ozzy yeah. Osbourne believes that T-Pain yeah. has the best cover of his song, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. That is kind of crazy. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne was on Too Many Drugs when Faith No More did their cover, though. So listen to it for yourself. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, listen to it for yourself. I, I assure you, I don't think anyone could listen to the Faith No More cover and walk away thinking it's not the, the best version of that song. Fair enough. Yeah, and what's interesting enough, speaking on covers, he—I don't know if you guys know—he dropped an entire album of covers. Yeah, he did under the covers, yeah. right? Yeah, on on top of the covers, very close. Yeah, he was inspired by Weezer, who did the same thing. Yeah, the Teal yeah. album. Love that. I mean, and honestly, it, it's and like let because he's a singer, right? Mm. And so, like, let him do it. Oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's just nice to know that, like. I feel like we're going through a period where a lot of our artists are getting older and either they're completely disappearing or they're becoming Bad. not good people. <laughs> or the, it's it, rev being revealed. Yes. Um, it is nice to know that people like T-Pain exist and we grew up listening to his music and he's a good person. <laughs> Non-problematic. He's just streaming and he's still giving back to the community. I love his streaming too. Music. I'm not a stream. Like, I'm not... It, it, and that's also partially because, like, throughout the 2010s, he had uh, some financial issues mm -hmm. that he's learned from. Oh, you know, really? Surrounding I, know, himself. Yeah. I believe that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He put out, I... in 2018, he put out an album, Everything Must Go, and I believe that was for, like, a bankruptcy he was going through. Like, he was selling a bunch of shit. I blame the big-ass chain. I blame the big-ass chain, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <ass> chain. <laughs> yeah, he was dealing with, so, like, that's why in today's day, he's, like, super laid back and like doesn't stress about shit that's good it's like got a house in wisconsin he also streams a lot on twitch <laughs> yeah no, yeah man. it's like i'm not mad at him do what makes like, you that's happy, why he, he laid back on a lot of stuff yeah. yeah i mean i remember he also just seemed like it's interesting because you know i didn't know that and i'm sure it's true but like i think that has given him like some really smart business acumen when it comes to the music industry because mm -hmm. I was watching his stream, and he was talking about how people will come to him for splits, right? And they'll be like, oh, you know, we want you to work on this pro song, but we want 70%. And his reaction is like, why don't you take 100% of it? Because, you know, residuals are shit. Streaming has killed that. Yeah. And I'm going to take this song, and I'm going to perform and make, you know, 250 nights a year, make $60,000 a night. And, you know, it it's no... So, like... You know, him just like having a very sober, rational, like clean face look at like this, the industry, I think, is why he's kind of going through like a, 
I don't want to say like a renaissance because I don't think he ever really went away, but it does seem like in the I'm last standing. Yeah, I think in the last few years, I think a lot of younger artists have really started tapping him for like features and things like that. And I hope we see more of it, right? Like, I thought mm-hmm. his feature on Troubles was incredible. Like, one of the best return to forms for a feature artist I've ever seen. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Does anyone he have. started and produced Free Kick. So, you know. oh, the documentary. Yes. Yeah. The biopic, actually. Interesting. But yeah, no, I think. Do we want to go through like some of? You know, the... I prepared. <laughs> go, yeah, go. Ahead. I have all the features up. Not go all through. of them. But okay. I have like, because <laughs> when you first told me about this, we were supposed to do this two or three weeks ago. Um, I realized, and I just threw it on shuffle, and I was like, "Damn, he's in this song. He's in this song. He's in this song." And it quickly occurred to me that, like, is he like? Does he have the greatest feature on ever? Basically, it's up there. Um, He's got so one of them. Start, I'm gonna start listing some, and I'm also going to list the Billboard peak. Um, I'm sprung came out in 2005. Was that a feature peak though? That, uh, oh, no, I'm just his. gonna go through all of this. Stuff. Oh, okay, all of it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm sprung peaked at number eight. Hey, baby is a feature for Pitbull peaked at number seven. Shotty get loose. Is a feature for Lil Mama with Chris Brown peaked at number ten. Wild. Um, some other ones, obviously, Good Life with Kanye West peaked at number seven. Um, she got it by Two Pistols peaked at number twenty four. Oh my god. Yep. Oh yep. my god. <laughs> One more drink featured for Ludacris peaked at number twenty four. Shoddy by Plies. Absolute classic. Oh my god. <laughs> Absolute classic. Peaked at number nine. <laughs> I'm a flirt with R. Kelly. Unfortunately, he's yeah, he did what he did. But that peaked at number twelve. Um The Boss with Rick Ross peaked at number seventeen. Cyclone Baby Bash peaked at number seven. Jesus. It I'm not done. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, all I do is win DJ Cali. Jesus the world <laughs> <laughs> peaked at number 24. God, um, recession hip hop. Bring it back. Like, right. Yeah, Get yeah. money. Little what Wayne. Obviously. Dude, all I do is win version two with T-Pain, Tyler, Baby Keem. Bring them all back. Yeah. I'm down. And Snoop Dogg. Um, Bring Snoop Dogg back. You and dad. Yup. Yeah. I'm a um, flirt. Hold on. I'm, I'm getting there on a boat. Peaked at 56. Insane. Um, all the all the above peaked at number thirty nine, and then obviously bartender's own song, and then the ones that peaked at number one, "Kiss Kiss" by Chris Brown, probably one of the most famous songs I can think of. Yeah, it's um, like for a second I was like, "Have I heard that?" And then it just the entire no, thing. You know, "Kiss Kiss." Yeah, Kiss, Kiss. <laughs> you know every I lyric to that song, whether you like it or not. With me. Yeah, it's like <laughs> one of the most iconic party songs of all yeah. time, right? I think he's just been so good at making these. He, he's so good. It, it is astonishing how easy he can fit into so many different styles and so many different like songs. It, it's it's amazing. It, he's honestly, it, it's a treat to have him in the rap game. Yeah. Uh, I close it out low by Flo Rider. Oh, Peaked my God. One. Had to end with it. Dude, that's an insane. I I think if you're if you're crunching numbers, I don't think there's anyone. No. And you missed no so many more. Yeah, I think if you're it's not crunch, even his own songs. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're crunching the numbers, I don't think there's anyone who has had a better feature it, like Rod. I don't like, think I don't think come close. Yeah. I think you know I think it all comes down to personal preference, obviously, which is why we will debate our position on who is the best feature artist. We are doing it. Yeah, okay. we're going to do that. Uh, but uh, you could have warned us. I'm not ready. <laughs> what? There are some features that. Well, actually, maybe if we're going to do feature artists right now, maybe we can let them sit because oh. they weren't. They probably weren't charting. But like, there's some albums that I think are some of our favorites that he's on. We haven't talked about yet. Though. Go ahead. Yeah, bring them right. up. No, if it's about T Pain, bring up anything yeah. about T Pain right now. Like, T-Pain is on Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. Yeah, I've been bringing that up. Yeah. You'd, There's a lot of bad. newer I, stuff. Don, 
We didn't. I was gonna say we didn't bring up the fact that he's on coloring book. He's on finish line. Does of course. No, he's. I did not bring up the fact that he's on coloring book. That's nuts. He's not even credited for all the stuff he's on. Yeah. He's. Yeah. He's on. It's. That's the one that has. It's Chance, No Name, Aaron Allen Kane, and Kirk Franklin all in one. What track. a song. What a song. It's insane. Yeah. And he's on a bunch of R. Kelly. So we we don't gotta talk about that. It'd be like that. God, that is wild. I found a bunch of Jay Z. That makes sense. I wonder, and like, I bet if we looked at like his writing credits, I bet there's even more that we should not open that, up that jar of worms. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my we God. wouldn't end. Yeah. No. This. I'm looking at all. Oh, he's on Rolling thing. Papers with Luis Khalifa. That's yeah. nuts. Rolling Papers it's is a classic. Banger. Yeah. That is good. He's yeah. on Black and Yellow, the, the remix. Yeah. Wow. I love that remix. The G mix with Wiz yeah. Khalifa, Snoop yeah. Dogg. The G mix. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I love Snoop that Dogg. song. Of course, it's the G mix. Yeah. <laughs> oh He's on Free Six Lack for the bonus track. Oh, my God. It's insane. That's just, that slaps. And, you know, I do That's think it is something to be said because I think, and this is another reason I wanted to bring him up. Right. Because we are very album focused, we are very album focused podcast, right? Yes. That has always been the most enjoyable way for me to interact with music and interface with music. As kind of, I think it's it can be said all the same. And you know, I couldn't name a T Pain album. Yeah, except for on top of the covers because it was so recent and so clear about what it is but still I can. three ring circuit or three rings yeah that's a but still classic. i don't think that diminishes the impact he's had right i don't think this is a, a <clears throat> mark against him in any capacity i think it's just like identifying where the talent lies right and like some artists are great at crafting albums and i think in order to be good at crafting albums you have to be pretty good at writing songs but I think T-Pain is just like one of the best people alive at just writing songs. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that just goes to show. I mean, look at all these featured singles. Look at all these famous songs that everybody knows the words of. It's nuts. They're all anthems. They're, They're anthems. all anthems, is T -Pain, right? Is T-Pain the Meryl Streep of music? Uh, I don't know. I would say T Pain is the Robert Downey Jr. of music because everything he makes goes crazy. But like, you know, like I don't think any of these songs are particularly like introspective, and I think that's a huge part of like Meryl Streep's appeal. You know, and not that it needs to be right. Like T Pain is yeah. is proof, living proof that you do not need to have, you know, that level of that kind of content to make incredible music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking T Pain has a like, point of he has a point of, of view, T Pain's though. career where he doesn't go to jail. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I guess it I is was, good. I was thinking along the lines of like ubiquitous with the industry, but also like kind of under awarded within it. You know, like Meryl Streep has a, a pretty lousy actual hit rate in terms of like projects that she has been awarded for. Relative, is to, that like, true? I think she's the most there. awarded actress in history. Right, but you look at the, the the ratio of nominations to awards, and she actually has one of the lower ones. Is that true? So she gets a she. It is. She gets nominated like so much. Yeah. 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 yeah she she doesn't she, win she often. Doesn't, yeah. She, at, she's at nominated. Often. But like it. But like, do you, do you see how I think it's problematic to describe the person who has won the award the most amount of times in history as <laughs> under awarded? Do you see what I mean? Like, I don't think it. That, I don't think the ratio matters at all when you're number one. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think there's an actor who is out, you know, a male actor who is out. Uh, uh, who has out earned her either. So she might be like one of the most awarded actresses of all time. So, you know, it's kind of I think it comes down to the fact that like, yeah, like like every every time a new quarterback like com like makes beats the record for the most completions, they also inevitably beat the record for the most interceptions and incomplete yeah. passes, right? So I think it's just like part of the game. I don't actually think that's all that note interesting or noteworthy. Mm -hmm. 
Should it, we have our debate then? Okay, yeah. So who? Go ahead. And we can debate. do this. Okay, the debate. I just wanna, I, Go ahead. I want to say Marischief has a fourteen percent win rate. Who overall? Oh, geez, okay. Th- three wins for twenty-one nominations versus like I th- I'm pretty sure Jennifer Lawrence technically has a higher hit rate. But it's just like, but like it's it's arbitrary. Yeah, I I just think it's arbitrary and very silly. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you get I mean, like I think T Pain T Pain I think is under recognized in the sense of like if the awards matter. That's all I'm saying is like yeah. I think he's like very industry synonymous, but like is not recognized by the establishment in the same way that like other artists. The do. community will. Yeah, yeah, the community might, but yeah, I'll take the community over. No, over the Grammys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so as a twist, seeing as the obvious, <laughs> I could see where this was going. Like when I realized, like, oh, we should do a T Pain episode. We're gonna talk about who we think, and there's gonna be a short debate. It's not gonna be like a whole yes. ass episode, like the thing. I think we each get three or four minutes to make a case. Uh, we can go to Cutland if you want, uh, but I, I'm just doing this off the cuff because I want to know what you guys actually believe. I don't want us to sit here <laughs> the top. and triangulate Let's and come up with strategies. I want us to actually stand on it. Okay. Is anyone okay, gonna go is anyone gonna take T Pain? I have my artist picked. I'm not gonna you take can, T-Pain. You can take T Pain. I, I think T Pain's a great option. I just didn't want to take it. I, I have my artist picked. I'm not taking T Pain. I'm not taking T Pain. I have an honorable mention in my artist pick. I don't think anyone should take T Pain since we just talked about him. I think they should be outside. Of Do you T-Pain. think we should just put like who's the best feature artist besides T Pain? <laughs> like, sure, it's fair. Yeah. Like, okay. Cool. Because I don't think any of us have T Pain. No, no. No. Like I just thought like obviously like someone would want to because we just went over <laughs> the argument. But yeah, that's a that's a that's a cop out. That's easy. That's the easy way out. That's the easy way out. Okay, I respect I'll, that. I'll say my honorable mention because I do have an honorable mention. I do not have an honorable. Well, mention. Let's, let's, let's do that after all all of us choose. Okay, okay. Okay. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, we say it all this... together on the count of three. <laughs> so we so we don't steal each other. So we all got the same person. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, one, two, three. Shake the weekend. Interesting. I think we all said different. Yeah, things. we don't. Yeah, I'm we very did. proud. All right. Okay, so you said the weekend. Yes. You said future, Jeff. What did you say? Jay Z. Jay Z. And all, who did you all say? Correct. J Cole. I said J Cole. Grippy. I'm I'm subtracting Grippy. You can't subtract that. You're, you're going off of recency bias. He had the greatest run in the last couple of years. He had a very good run. Oh my I, God. I, I you that. cannot deny that. Right. But okay. So you have one bad feature. Yeah. It, that's fair, I guess. All right. Do we all want to go around and do our little like spiels? Like, okay, I'm gonna say it. When was it when was any time you have ever heard a song featuring the weekend and thought there could be a better singer on that hook. Heart, and you can't say it's a female singer because I feel like that's a cop out. I feel like that's a different thing. And I don't care. Yeah. Uh, let's look What's at this. That awful song off Utopia. I was going to say, there, there's some songs. I don't know. Like K pop? You mean the K-pop, part? Yeah. yeah. You mean the song that he's the best part of? The leading single? Yeah. yeah. But like, I think, I think that they could have gotten someone who is actually as creepy to. to you know, deliver like a verse that creepy. I don't see, I don't compute. So I'm just going to go over. It was, the, it was a joke, whatever. Yeah. I was going to go over the feature list because it's insane. We have Crew Love. We have Jesus, uh, Jesus. Or Nah, Fuck My Life Up, Low Life, Might Not, Love Me Harder. Don't forget uh, the knob songs. Huh? I won't forget the knob songs. Uh, I'm not, I'm not picking all of them. I am not no, picking all of them. Joking. We have Alive, French Montana. Uh, we have Pray For Me <laughs> from the Black Panther movie. One of my favorite, favorite compilations got taken off of YouTube. It was during the press run for Black Panther where they were talking to the director about what it was like to work with Kendrick Lamar. And every single time he says, yeah, we also worked really closely with The Weeknd and they just moved on. And they just didn't – like you could tell he was just very eager – to talk about that and like you just moved on. Uh, he was on, uh, what was it? Wake up and skeletons off Asher World. Wake up is one of my favorite songs off Asher World. He was on uh, Hurricane, the one of the best songs off Donda. Uh, we still don't trust you. 
he was all over, you know, two of the best albums released this year. Mm. You know, like the run is insane. And I think more than any other artist we're going to talk about, it is dynamic. It goes across different artists. I don't think anyone else that we named could do a song with Ariana Grande. And I think that's worth something. Um, Future is on Dangerous Woman. Is she, no, is he is he on the remix? Yeah, future is a good, good question, pick. Actually, future Future's is a good, good pick. pick Future is a very good pick. I'm not. Future I don't think anyone here pick. did a bad pick. Yeah, no. But yeah, there's as simple as that. Like, I think. I just simply <clears throat> think that the weekend is the best male singer working today. Mm-hmm. And by that virtue, I think that and his catalog, I think, cements him as like the best feature. At least working today, I can say that I think he's definitely second to T Pain, considering how long T Pain has had, and just how many classics there are. Do you count a feature if it's a chorus? For a singer, yeah. especially, yes. Okay, I'm yeah. just curious. It yeah, I think if it's a rap. First off, like I'm just gonna for the per- pro- processes of this debate, yes. Like, <laughs> okay, just just straight up, yes. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a gray area when it's a rapper. I think when it's a singer. I'm like, yeah, that's their contribution. That's, that's, that's their contribution, right? That was, yeah, yeah. you know, that's the fair. whole thing. Yeah. So that's, that's my pick. Jasper looks ready. So go ahead. <laughs> it's in the name. Future feature. Come on now. Future's on fucking everything. He's been on everything he, forever. He's on everything. Purvis, I'm pretty sure I influenced one of your song picks for this week because of that meme I sent in the group chat the other day on Tuesday. Wait, the the, the 3500, fu- Future's 3500 verse, fill it, fulfill oh, no, no. those needs. <laughs> this one did come on shuffle, but I know what you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So so let's just let's let's run it back for a second. Future's on Utopia on one of the best songs on Utopia, Telekinesis. He's on Reputation, Taylor Swift, as an actual feature, not just a remix. He's on Heroes and Villains. He's all over Heroes and Villains. He's on Starboy with The Weeknd. Post Malone's best album, in my opinion, Hollywood's Bleeding. He's on two different Drake projects, Views and Certified Lover Boy. He made King's Dead with Kendrick Lamar and made it the he most made, iconic made part of that song. He's on Playboy Cardi's Whole Lot of Red. He's on The First Time by Kid Leroy. He's on a rodeo. He has one of the most iconic verses on 3500, or just on one of the most iconic songs in general. He's on the Black Panther album with you know Kendrick and SZA. He's on Pop Smoke, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. He's on 2093. He's on the Metro Boomin Spider-Verse soundtrack. He's on Love Sick and Hearthstone Psycho for Don Tolliver. He's on Bangers with Miley Cyrus. I'm Not a Human Being too, Little Wayne. He's on Chris Brown's 1111, Lil Baby's album My Turn. DS Forever with Gunna. Oh my god, I just He's on everything. On. Yeah, it's he's actually, on every it's, it's funny. He yeah, but the question everything. is not who's on the moat. Mm, I'm not gonna do my counter argument. I I have I can tear this argument in, in half. I don't know. I, I do like the list. Oh no no no. I like he's Future's Bulls, undeniably Bulls, in the conversation. Like, undeniably in the conversation. Right? I think it's I think we should count sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I do, are we Okay. I'm gonna do my counters. Because I think it's very telling, if we're talking about best features, that you're mentioning the projects they're on and not the actual songs, right? I think some of those, I like I his features, songs in front of me. Yeah, that's all. well, like the features for like 2093, I think that's one of the better songs on the project. But is that true of every future thing? I, I don't know. For a lot of these, yeah. <clears throat> you know, like I, I think, think he does contribute I, a lot to the songs, but. The way I was thinking about it, do they actually make the song better? Do yeah, they that's my thing. The original person, which I think he does on some of them. Yeah, I think he definitely does. Stand on it, which is good without future, is iconic because of future, right? I definitely agree with that. And there's definitely he's on Bugatti, you know, like yeah, that's like one of the most iconic features of all time. Like he is absolutely a a S tier gold standard feature, right? I would say he's the most influential out of everyone we named. Mine is Jay-Z. Yeah. We've, we've, yeah I think it's I think it's very close. Of, yeah, I think it's close. I think it's very close. But yes, I would I would agree with that. Yeah. But so like he he's a perfect feature because like he damn near is making the sounds and then coming on as a feature. Right. But he, I, he has a collaborative a album pick. with Juice World. And he with is Travis. a good pick. Or not yeah. with Travis, sorry, that's Quavo. But yeah. Uzi. yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah, right, seven yeah. million. Great song. Uh, so I'll lead that into Jay Z. Uh, all I have to say is he is one of the only rappers, not only rappers, but he's one rapper who can do it good. Uh, being featured on a pop song with Mariah Carey, Beyonce, you know, Drunk in Love, Crazy in Love. You had Heartbreaker by Mar- Mariah Carey. You had Suit and Tie with Justin Timberlake. So he's mixing genres. Oh, that is um, I've oof, I did not anticipate that. Yeah, you're right. That's that's a pretty that's a pretty good <laughs> argument. You got that. <laughs> and then you, this is a solid argument. That's a good argument. I can't we can't deny it. Prime, you got Prime Kanye West with Diamonds from Sierra Leone. Never let me down. You got a great push of T song, Drug Dealers Anonymous. My President is Black remix with Jeezy. And then you got anything that he's done with Rick Ross, you know, The Devil is a Lie. He had Young Jeezy go crazy. He's had a phenomenal run in the late 90s, early 2000s. And Jay-Z is just one of those artists you can kind of put anywhere on a feature. Mm. He just fits. I will. I agree with you. My counterpoint, he has been on... I think four or five different DJ Khaled projects, and I've got to hold that against him on some of this. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I didn't list any DJ Khaled. <laughs> you you got to hold him. Against. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. It's like he, he but, he's but, ungrateful. Like, what, sir, what DJ are you doing? Khaled does so much. I mean, DJ Khaled. Yeah, so many people do numerous DJ Khaled things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's a tax write-off. I think it's all a scam. <laughs> yeah, 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 very. He very is a well businessman. He's a businessman. He's on It's Almost Dry. We didn't even talk about that. And he is a great verse on It's Almost Dry. He really does. He does. He really yeah. does. The... Damn. Oh, that's a good one. Damn. I'm going to listen to that in the car tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to listen to that album in the car tonight. I missed yeah. that album. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Yeah, that was a... That's a compelling argument. That was a compelling argument. I... <laughs> You're welcome. For um... being on the fly, too. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. All right, perfect. Tell us about Grippy. Yeah, I will close this out. Um, minus the Grippy verse, you cannot deny that he has had the best feature run between, I would say, nineteen to now. Um, in terms of what he's had his hands on and what he has actually impacted on, I'm not gonna go through all the lists because there's a lot of songs, but some big names. Or some big songs. First person shooter is what started everything. Yeah, and I think that's noteworthy. Um, he's done songs. <laughs> in with... way? Yeah, that's a good song. <laughs> yeah, but like, what song? Up with him being humiliated. So like, I what know. song? I mean, it was kind of the beginning of first person first shooter. First person shooter. Oh yeah. Um, I think if I you were pulling you up seven that. minute drill and using that, like, I'd be like, yeah, mm. that would be different. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I. Sure, I'll give it to you. Yeah, first person. Sh- he's also like, just very good. That's a very good feature from him. And the reason I was saying J. Cole is because all these features are actually features that he, in my opinion, outshines the original artist, which is a big deal for me. Um, all My Life, The Secret Recipe, the entire song that he made for Summer Walker, The London, um, All I Want Is You with Miguel. He's had features for Jay-Z as well. Um, Trippy, Anderson Pack. Joey Badass. Joey Badass, Legendary. Yeah. Party Beyonce, Boss. Benny the Butcher, Benny the Butcher, Boz, Gucci Earth Mane, yeah. Justin Earth Timberlake. Yeah. Like, talk about going across other genres. Um, but yeah, P- Pretty Little Fears, Shea Butter Baby, Prey, um, Off D's with Jid. Oh my God, that goes hard. Stick. Um, stick. Uzi. Literally. He was on. Um, Looking for trouble with um, Kanye West, Pusha T, Big Sean, all of that. He was on the London and all this stuff that I'm listening. Johnny P. Caddy, that like broke the internet that people kept talking about the the Benny Butcher um, features with Little Wayne. It, it goes on and on. It's to top us off to to end the, the debate for me. A lot is one of the best features we've gotten in the last decade. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I forgot to add one for mine. Jay Z also has an album with Lincoln Park. I forgot all about that. Damn. Yeah, no. These are yeah, all good. Did. I guess, I guess, like with J Cole, like I know you say it's one song, right? I know you it say it is the best song. 
It's a very bad. Song. It's a bad song at the worst possible time. It is. It's the bad it song is. after he walked away. You know, he he released a kind of a weak diss track during uh, an active conflict, uh, and then brought it back. <laughs> apologized for it, and then this was like. Does Grippy outweigh even three of the songs you just brought up? No. No. But it definitely has the most weight out of any individual songs because of what happened in the beef, because of and that being like him coming out the other side of it with that, I think is a pretty strong mark. Right. I mean, I think that is fair. I but I also feel like that's recency bias. As soon as he drops an album, no one's gonna care what we're talking about. I don't know. I don't know. Like I think people will remember, you know, the don't the fact talk that about grippy now though. What are we doing? We don't bring up Grippy for real when we talk about J. Cole and over text. We don't I mean, praise J. Cole and then go, well, what about Grippy? I kind of am, though. Like, I like <laughs> just because, like, it, it's not so much the song itself, but it's more like coming out of like a beef. And like, J. Cole is an artist who had always claimed to be the best. Like, let's keep yeah. it real. And then. Coming out of a beef where you handedly got on the definitely on the wrong side of it, you know. I think he definitely saved. It could have been much worse, but like, and then releasing that song, I think that's a big misstep, and I don't think it's going to be forgotten. I think it can be re- recontextualized. I think it can become a much smaller deal as time goes on, for sure. But no, I don't think people will forget that Kendrick Lamar, you know ate Drake and J. Cole's lunch, and then they released that Hey, Der- hey Juan, Delilah, and Grippy in response, <laughs> right? I don't think people will ever forget that. I think people will forgive it. I don't think they'll forget it. I don't know. I think time will tell. I feel like The weekend just had out. that whole show with the idol that was terrible. People yeah, but the Palestinian community re- a- 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 forgave him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wanna, I and the other out. thing, I do think different. I do think different thing because that's a television show. It's not a song. These but are musicians. Music for the show that was terrible. right, but but the music for the show isn't what people were c- complaining about. I think all of it. That's no, good. they no, they were complaining about some very the specific acting, thing. Acting was, yeah. The acting, and then also just like the show itself being very bad. So like, yeah, the idol was like a bad thing probably the worst thing any of these artists that we're talking about have produced but it's also completely irrelevant in my opinion because it's a tv no, show it's a completely different skill set no, who has neither of these pitfalls this future who also predicted the whole drake versus kendrick beef on king's dead where he said you're not a gang member you're a tourist i'd be blacking out bought an 83 cutlass for the weekend i think the thing Come is on. that like I think the thing about Future is I feel like it, it might be oversaturated. And all the features aren't. And, like, the features aren't near. I, I think of these artists, I think he's the least dynamic. Right? Like That's true. That's yeah, true. I think he's by far the least dynamic. Don't get me wrong. There's definitely something to be said that, like, Future created this sound. So that's why he's so omnipresent. There's no doubt in my mind Future is a top f- three or four feature artists of all time. That's not a question. But... I don't know. Like, I do feel like sometimes, like, I do feel like sometimes his addition, like, Telekinesis, I think that's a great song. I think it's kind of a great song in spite of Future's feature. And I like Future, and I like that song. Yeah, because I think, like, I think the song just really meanders until the SZA moment. And, like, it's worth the buildup, but that song's five and a half minutes long. That's a lot. That is a long song. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time counting. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> so I like. Don't get me wrong. I think Future has like some excellent features, but he also has. That, I think he also probably has the most stinkers too, like way too sexy. I mean, when you're drunk enough, it's a vibe. I don't hate that song, but and I'll say that like, I'll I'll say about a Drake, Drake song. song. I will admit about a Drake song. Like, hey, that's like, yeah. You know. yeah. I was gonna say Drake to piss off Jasper, yeah. and like, <laughs> and it almost feels no, like it, I mean. It almost feels like Future is like, in one way, I could just be, I, I think someone could hear this and then be like, oh, okay, he's definitely the winner of this argument. So I'm going to risk that. But like, it feels like 
Future is almost like a different beast because think of how many collab albums he has. Think of how many, you know, like, you know, does uh, if you're it's what a time to be alive or world on drugs even count is LP a feature on a run the jewel song? I don't think so. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. so I think that's another thing is the one I think a lot of things that like, yeah, in function as features technically aren't. And uh, yeah, but it's, it's a tough one. It's hmm. a it's a tough one. I have nothing for Jay Z. Yeah, no, I have I nothing mean, for Jay Z. Jay-Z. Jay-Z I have like nothing. I'm sorry. The like, highest <laughs> you can do. Yeah, like it's, I got. I got I mean, the only one of the artists we named is on biking with Frank Ocean. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. They, they, well, I like that song though, so that's a plus. And he's and Jeff saying, did like, not it's, even it's like mention one of my favorite Jay Z features. And that well, is that was actually... jail. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess that's uh, true. The original version. I guess yeah. that's true. I guess yeah. that is true. Yeah, the original jet. Well, all that red cap, we going home. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I got no, I got no counter arguments for Jay Z. I have some counter arguments I for Jay Cole. Jay Z is a pretty safe pick. It yeah, safe pick. I think if anything, it's, it's just a, like it's he's a very safe, safe pick. pick, and like, I think it's what what Purvis said. Like, how how often are they the best part of the song? And like yeah. I think yeah. that is maybe yeah. the only weakness Jay Z has. Yeah. Uh yeah. is that yeah, maybe I'd he's agree, not yeah. the best part of the song every single time. But you're but good consistent consistent quality though, and yeah. honestly more dynamic than I gave him credit for. Like uh, what I wanna say is this to close out the debate. I wanna say my honorable mention. Okay, yeah, Jeff say your honorable mention earlier. Yeah. Jasper brought up Frank Ocean. What I think is someone who has a great feature who actually outperforms every time, gives a good, good feature every time, regardless, can sing and rap, is Andre 3000. Yeah, he was yeah, honorable mention. He's, he's it's not good. a lot, but that's it that's the is thing goated. is that like <laughs> it is goaded. It is goaded, right? Uh, it, you're, yeah. It's going to be yeah. a perfect feature yeah. every time. No, that's. Well, no, it's not. Scientists and engineers is overrated, but yes, I agree with you. Otherwise. No, no. <laughs> yes, I don't hate that take. I, I, I respectfully. Scientists and engineers is fucking overrated. No, <laughs> didn't deserve the Grammy. No, You're just yeah. I mean, You're I do think it. I do think it's overrated. I just think it still deserved the Grammy because I think Killer Mike was the most compelling artist that was nominated that year. Uh, I agree with that, but I don't think they gave it to it because it was Killer Mike. I think Frank or Frank. I think. I disagree. Yeah, he won that's... three awards. He did one. No, no, I'm saying for that specific award. Yeah, I know. I just feel like it's a. I feel like that argument falls apart when he's winning other awards that are more on his merit, right? I feel like that becomes a an unreasonable assumption. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, tell Isaac he has a a thing to judge now. Uh. I'm not gonna do a full debate on this. <laughs> no, he's just, or, no, we're done. Like the, no, we all it's win. The end of a, it's, the, it's the end of an epic rap battle of history. Who won? Who lost? Who's next? <laughs> yeah, comment, comment, like, and subscribe, and tell us who won this debate. <laughs> all right, there you go. That's as far as I got. Do we want to do recommendations? Yes. Okay, I'm doing a bit. Oh boy, Here I'm doing go. a bit. <laughs> okay, the first one I want to recommend is. Uh, a recent addition to my favorite cold weather songs because I make weird associations between music and things. You have a whole playlist for this. Yeah, I do. When it's cold it's and dark, too. I have 100%. a playlist for that. I 100% do that. Yeah. Um, relatively recent song came out in 2020. Uh, the Void by Kid Cudi. Oh, yeah, very yes. good. The Void by Kid Cudi. Excellent. I love that song. I, I love that song in a vacuum i love that song's placement and like what it represents on the album i uh it came on while i was you know now that i'm employed i walk at night and not during the day because that's when i'm working and it just came on my shuffle one night when i was walking home i don't know like a beautiful dark night and it was like i floated i actually floated into my apartments that sounds like some kind of like pro that's like some like pro pro work 
advert or poster from like the Great Depression. Don't fall in the void, get void. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's my first one. Uh, void by Kid Cudi. Or The Void, I don't know. It is The Void, yes. Um, I'll go next. Go ahead. Uh, so my first one's going to be a, a blues song that I just came across. It's a blues song about doing cocaine, Little White Lies, by uh, Liam St. John and Joshua Quimby. A shocking amount of blues songs are about doing cocaine. This is going to be great. Oh, this, 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 yeah, this, this oh, is, yeah, this is I got to listen to this. I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, it, it, you'll like it. Um, the video for it's actually even better, I'd say. Oh, fun. I love listening to that. Well. Um, I'll go next then. I'm only doing, I really do like new songs because I try to, you know, bring up some old stuff, but I know we are not going to review Absol's album, so I'm going to recommend not a song yet. off his new album. I think we need to do a catch up where we all listen to a bunch of albums a and spend. A bunch of stuff. Because like we, I, I would like to talk about Glorilla. I'd like to talk about the new Big X, The Plug. Yeah. I'd like to talk about Absol. I want to talk about Big Sean because it Big Sean. Good. I can listen to Big Sean with you. Earth Gang, yeah. Large Sean, Earth Gang. I did, yeah. We had to Sean then. There's a lot of albums I can, but anyway, I'm doing Absol. California Dream features Vin, uh, Vin Staples. Amazing. It's a it's a great song. Probably the best song on the album, in my opinion. Hell yeah. Jasper, is it me? I revisited my favorite album of the year while doing yard work this week. I'm going with Lothonia by Charles Gambino. Mm -hmm. Every time it comes on, just belt that shit. Wait, is this your golden nugget? That's what you're yes. claiming so far? Spoiler oh, alert. Interesting. Spoiler interesting. alert. Yeah. Until like something, change. unless something else comes out in the next month and a half that, you know, really, really impresses me. We got to start planning for our golden nugget. All right, Brandon. All right. Uh, my next one is going to be by a, a artist I like quite a bit. Uh, I've been following them since early in their career. When I heard their song uh, in a bar in Panama City Beach, Florida, and I have not stopped listening since, uh, it's, the band is The Neighborhood, and the song is The Void. <laughs> it's uh, it is honestly okay. like shockingly because they came, yeah, like it, it's another song that came on, although in a completely different context, it just kind of came on, and it was from this this album they dropped that was like really really good. But it was one of the worst managed releases I've ever seen. Because, like, they just released the album, like, four times in different orders with different songs. It's cool. Like, there's, like, a Denzel Curry feature on, like, one of the songs. Like, they tap into a little bit of hip-hop. This song does not. Uh, I I've always described the neighborhood as uh, the weekend for, like, white queer girls. And uh, the song is just kind of like an old-school ballad. I think it really fits, like, that, the the character of the artist and on an album where they were being a lot more dynamic. I thought it really stuck out. So, uh, the void and also the bit, I thought it was a fun bit. Respected. Um, my next one is a scenario, a tribe called a tribe. Called so what you want to watch out the stereo. Oh, I I've love that. To a lot of a tribe called quest. Very good. So good. Classic, classic, classic. Um, I'm not even gonna get into mine. It's it's Travis Scott 90210, and and that's all I'm gonna say. Self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, I Self told Brandon that I realized I haven't listened to Travis like at all recently, so uh, I went back shocking. to the rodeo. It, it, honestly, very shocking. No. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I gotta end this on a little a little something here. Something exciting is happening. My last stuff. pick is, yeah, my last pick is a song y'all probably know, Purvis, even if you haven't listened to it, I know listen this to song. it, I'm sure you know it, yeah, I, I see My it. Chemical I Romance, Welcome to the Black Parade, My Chemical Romance is going on tour for their Long Live the Black Parade stadium tour next year, We have 20 years yeah. of the album, mm -hmm. tickets go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m., I will be buying them. I have four alarms. Raise your hand if you want a ticket. <laughs> wow, you guys are locked in. <laughs> no. Oh, it's not me. Yeah. It's, it's not me. It's, don't worry. It's, it's Katie for me, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. 
Uh, you guys are you guys are serious. Yeah. We we and saw Lincoln Park inquired uh, about touring with them for that. Yeah, it could yeah, have Lincoln been Park Lincoln Park be here too. Yeah, Lincoln Park's yeah, they just, that got too. announced here this morning. That I might be interested in closer to. They'll be at the UC. Yeah, but I I kind of wish they had the same lineup that they have at Dodger Stadium because JPEG Mafia is opening up for them. That's sick. But I gotta I gotta just run this run this through here real quick while we're talking about it. I'm surprised we didn't put this in the news, but look at the people they are touring with. Violet Femst in Seattle, a hundred Gex in San Francisco, yeah. Wallows, Garbage, Death Cab for Cutie, Alice Cooper, the Pixies. No. They're gonna be with Devo here in Chicago, which is That's insane. Nuts. And then Idols and in Tampa they're gonna be with Evanescence. That's Evanescence nuts. Evanescence opening for MCR is unfucking believable. That's yeah, like top that's tier. Nuts. Someone's not going to survive that concert. No, people barely. No. I, when there I saw when I saw yeah, MCR Riot Fest was insane. Uh, when yeah. I saw MCR at uh, Riot Fest, it was the most insane crowd yeah. I have ever seen. No one. Metallica doesn't compete. Travis doesn't compete. Run the Jewels doesn't compete. None of them really? compete. Right. Yeah. Do you know how I'd do you know how uh yeah. Travis they stopped the concert twice so people could move back? They stopped it yeah. fourteen times. <laughs> people were like if you think and like I get like because it's like pop punk music and like at like a venue Chat like Riot didn't Fest. Even stop once. Yeah. Like like I get that like in this context moshing is a little bit more appropriate, but like literally every single song, including all of their slow ballads were met by the most mosh pits I have ever seen, right? <laughs> like, I have nuts. Like, I've seen basement shows with more restraint. Like, it is that Evanescence show, people people will die. <laughs> I was really about yeah, to say. Yeah, it's going to be insane. Show. Yeah, right? Like, the, yeah, before this summer, uh, the MCR show was the show that beat me up the most. And it honestly doesn't compare to the other one because that was just a teenager elbowing me at Flo Millie. <laughs> For context, this is going to be at Soldier Field and it will sell out. Yeah, like, it will sell the out. The weekend sells out at Soldier Field. They're going to add, they'll Soldier end Field. up adding a second show. No. It's such a limited oh, tour. You know they're going to add second shows to some of these days. It's only 10 stops. Yeah, it's crazy. such a small tour. Yeah, they're definitely bu- doing that to build in for overflow. Oh, because, like, I do think I, you know, and maybe I'm being naive, but I do think MCR is, like, one of those very fan-forward groups. So I definitely see them doing that. Uh, even though I'm not a massive fan of them, they are undeniably, they care very deeply about their fans. So I think Jeff's right on the money. All right. Well, that was our evening with Tallahassee Payne, our debate. This is the longest episode we had in weeks. <laughs> Damn. Been a lot to talk about. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we will see you guys next week. Same unpaid time, same unpaid place, YouTube. Same uh, unpaid nobodies. Same unpaid nobodies. Or different. Who knows? Who knows what happens next week? No one knows. You never know. Yeah. All right. I'm going to just stop.